Joining us again, Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, an architect of the Affordable Care Act and vice provost at the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Emanuel, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good. Since the relaunch uh, a week ago of the website, enrollment numbers are up sharply. That's the good news. But the administration says that the website is still sending erroneous messages or incomplete information to insurers about one in 10 people who think they have signed up. Isn't a 10% error rate still a serious problem? Well, as I understand it, they're working very hard on those so-called so 834 forms. And second of all, they're working with the insurers to clean up that information and they did push that a little further down, which they have time to do because they don't need to get the information to them for another uh, few weeks. And they're both working really hard to solve that problem. In addition, they identified one bug that seemed to be causing a large portion but it's still of a problem, those, would you agree, of those a 10% error rate? Look, you're, they're solving problems. In October, you said they couldn't solve the problem of signing up. They have gone a long well, I never way to said solve that. it. They've gone a long You're way to solving that, that problem, Dr. Azik and, and now, Dr. Emanuel. And now they've put, they decidedly put this second, and they're addressing it. Okay, but let me make the point. I never said that they couldn't fix it. I'm just simply pointing out it isn't fixed, and there's still a 10% error rate. Let, let's get into that, because you talked about the fact that the government sends nightly 834 forms, enrollment forms, to the insurers, which tell them how many people have signed up, who they are, all the information. Uh, but it turns out that somebody, that some people are, are just left off entirely. That's called an orphan report. Isn't it the fact, isn't it certainly a real possibility that thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of people who think they've signed up, these so-called orphans, may end up on January 1st not having coverage? Well, it's an interesting issue. When we did the Medicare Part D under President Bush, that was the drug benefit for seniors. There were a lot of seniors who were left out and actually didn't get their drug refills and there were millions of people at that pro uh, that had problems during that switchover. These are large prob these are large switchovers and the government has said and I believe uh, Medicare has said it's very important to call the insurance company you have to make to verify that you have. In addition, in this case, they're sending out information with cards so people know whether they're covered or not. I think they're working diligently, both the insurers and the government, to make sure that people don't find themselves on January 1st or January 2nd without coverage. Look, that's an important thing, and everyone is trying to work together to solve the problem. We're trying to make this thing work. Is there going to be no glitches? I don't think anyone has that unrealistic expectation. I know that when I got my iPhone, there were lots of glitches. They sent updates for that. This happens with large-scale enrollments of millions of people. But I think there's a diligent effort now on everyone's part to reduce the chance of people being left off. All right. One of the keys to Obamacare, we've, everybody says, is that you got to get young, healthy people to sign up. Let's put this up on the screen. A new poll by the Harvard Institute of Politics finds only 20% of 18 to 29-year-olds say they will definitely or probably enroll. 47% say they will definitely or probably not sign up. Now, you have acknowledged the fact that if you don't get young people to sign up, there's the danger of what's called a death spiral, that, that not enough people, uh, young people sign up, there are too many older, uh, sicker people, premiums go up, more young, healthy people get off, and you end up eventually with a pool of just older, sicker people with sky-high premiums. Right. That is a real possibility, is it not? No, I don't think it's a real possibility. And let me identify several points why I think that poll is not a very useful piece of information. In, Cali the Harvard Institute in California, when they looked actually at the number of enrollees and they broke them down by age, the number of enrollees of young adults uh, I think it was 18 to 34, match the population in California that you would expect. And that's exactly what you want to be seeing. That's not a poll, that's actual signing up. Second of all, if you actually look can, at what... Can I, can I just... I, I don't mean to interrupt. And, and also, I, no, but let me just... I want to put up some numbers because I want to speak directly to that point before you move on, and then I'll let you move on. Put up, put up this number. Uh, it, Obamacare needs 7 million people to sign up. That's what the president said over and over. No, 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 that's what... The Congressional Budget Office projected would sign up. Okay. That's not what anyone said you need. That's a difference between need and projected. I've heard the White House spokesman talk re repeatedly about 7 million. And yes, that of that, if, you, if, if I may, sir, please, you don't want me to interrupt you. Right. You need 2.7 million of those people to be between the ages of 18 and 34. That is a percentage, 2.7 million of, 30, uh, of the 7 million of 39%. 
in California of the pool, 39%. In California, the pool so far is only 23%. So it's barely half of the 39% you need to have the right mix of young people. So your California example is completely wrong, no, sir. It's not completely wrong. It matches the population. That's the first it thing. That's wait, irrelevant wait, wait, wait. whether it the, matches the, the population. It doesn't match what, what Obamacare has said that you need as a, in the pool to keep a, a, a sustain, fiscally sustainable number. Now, I think there is going to be a fiscally sustainable number. And the other thing that I think you need to keep in mind is that the 18 to 34, a large number of those people are going to be on their parents' plan and not going to be buying insurance all on their own up to age 26. And so you're concentrated in a group of 26 to 34 year olds and that I think is where you need to get them to purchase with their own money and that I do think is a group that you're going to be able to get. Let me just say one other thing. Here are three reasons I think people in that age group are going to sign up. First, um, you do have a penalty. Now, everyone talks about $95, but the fact is it's 1% of income, which for most people is going to be more than $95. Second of all, you do have subsidies for almost for many of these people that is going to make the price look very low and be very low. So, for example, if you're a 30-year-old in California, you can get a silver plan, and you make about 150% of the poverty line, you can get a silver plan for $50 a month. Third, Given the preventative services and other things, that premium actually is something you can easily cover by using, good, by using the preventative services where all society benefits because people are getting preventative care. So I think actually there's many reasons for people to sign up that they will sign up. And I, no, I, I just want to point out, just I, I, have to move, I have to move on. One, one more thing I'd like to point out. Well, no I, one has launched a big PR campaign to get these people signed up because of the problems with the federal website. We are about to launch a big PR campaign, and that, I think, is going to persuade a lot of people I, to I sign up. I would simply up. point out that the Harvard poll says only 20% say they're going to sign up. And definitely. in California, and in California, no, definitely or probably. And so far in California, it's only 20%, so your 39% figure. We haven't had a, haven't had a the, PR other campaign. Other than I understand that the Obama campaign slogan was hope. But at this point, that's all you seem to have, that 39% are going to sign up. We haven't had a campaign, and we have four more months to go to the end of March. President Obama famously promised, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. <laughs> Doesn't that turn out to be just as false, just as misleading as his promise about if you like your plan, you can keep your plan? Isn't it a fact, sir, that it, a number, most, in fact, of the Obamacare health plans that are being offered on the exchanges ex exclude a number of doctors and hospitals to lower costs. The president never said you were going to have unlimited choice of any doctor in the country you the, want to go. I, I, Let so, me wait, just finish. Wait, no. He asked a question. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Did he not say that, sir? He, he didn't say you can have unlimited choice. Did he, I, it's a simple yes or no question. If, Did he say if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor? Yes, but look, if you want to pay more for an insurance company that covers your doctor, you can do that. This is a matter of choice. We know in all sorts of places you pay more for certain for a wider range of choices or a wider range of benefits. The issue isn't these selective networks. People keep saying, oh, the problem is you're going to have a well, selective network. Well, if you, if you lose your doctor let, or you lose your hospital. Let, let me just say something. People are going to have a choice as to whether they want to pay a certain amount for a selective network or pay more for a broader network. Which will mean your premiums get, will probably go up. They get that choice. That's a choice Which we always make. Which means your premium may go up over what you were paying so that, in other words... He, it, no it, one it, guaranteed you that your premium wouldn't increase. Premiums have been going up. The president guaranteed pre me I could keep my doctor. Under president, and if you want to, you can pay for it. Just under president Bush, the nose. premiums went up 80% after inflation. We've actually seen a leveling off of health care costs and premiums in the last few years because of changes that have been made. Finally, I have... I have As a matter of fact, choice is something we all understand, and we all understand that for more choice, more benefits, you have to pay more. Final question. Last week, you had this to say about the website. Let's put it up on the screen. For the first time, and most importantly, we actually have effective management overseeing. We have an integrator that's independent, and it seems to be effective, as opposed to having CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, run it. Which seems to be saying, if I can interpret what you're saying, you're saying, finally, we got somebody who knows what he's doing in charge, a CMS, who screwed this up. Question, should the president fire either HHS Secretary Kathleen Sebelius or CMS Administrator Marilyn Tavener? I think 
Not having an independent in integrator who has that expertise and not having a CEO was something that was a mistake. And I think the president recognized it. They've put Jeff Zients in place. They've promised to put a permanent they seat. They put him in place in they, October after the disaster. My question that is, was a mistake. Sh should they someone be held the, accountable? Look, the president is running his ship. He's going to decide how he's going to do it. Most companies, when they decide, get right the ship and then decide what has to happen. He'll make a decision. He'll make a decision if he's going to find a, uh, someone else to run. Uh, he, he's already committed to have someone, a new CEO, to run the website and the federal exchanges. And I think that is an excellent decision to replace Jeff Zients when he goes to the National Economic Council. And I think what it's quite clear you need someone who can manage that and really run it. Dr. Emanuel, thank you. Thank you again for coming in, sir. No problem. It's always interesting. Good.